Merry Christmas. Christmas time, mistletoe and wine and conflict. And conflict with you and family members that you've not seen for ages. I want you to imagine me wearing this hat. I'm not wearing it because... Do you want the truth? I don't want to ruin my hair. That's what it is. I've got other things to do after this. It will ruin my hair. So, you know, just in the spirit of Christmas, imagine me wearing this and uh, imagine someone a bit more seasonally in tune and less grinchy. I want to talk to you about how to deal with this conflict. It's an important opportunity to be with people that you don't agree with and get along with them. Because how are we going to change the world if we don't learn to get on with people that we disagree with? A New York Times article writes, according to the Pew Research Center, 77% of Americans believe the country has become more polarized since the pandemic, which is saying something that given before the pandemic, 40% of people on both sides of the political aisle considered the other side to be downright evil. Do you think that whichever side of whatever political or cultural issue you're on, do you think that the future is going to be you bleaching out opposition into a white, neutral, vanilla, expansive agreement? It's not going to be that, is it? It's not going to be a blanket of snow, of pure, neutered out, frozen compliance. It's going to be dealing with people that are different from you, different from us. So, if this Christmas you find yourself um, in a congregation of people with whom you disagree on hot button issues, whether it's coronavirus or written house or the culture wars or Black Lives Matter or the January insurrection or whatever issue, you know, we, I could find ways of disagreeing with my children and my wife. I do find ways of disagreeing with them. Little can be learned in this context. We will always learn more from learning to accept and nurture other people than by engaging in gestural conflicts as if we're standing up for someone, some mad, like, Parthian. Is Parthian the right word? Or Parthenon? Some weird sort of parliament. You're not, that's not what's happening. Like, sometimes I think this when I'm having an argument. I think, does this really actually matter? It's not like at the end of the argument someone's going to come and raise my hand and go, there! We, you, Russell has won. From now on, no one can express an alternative view. So if over this Christmas you're going to have to listen to people say stuff you don't agree with, this is what I try to remember. <sighs> Beneath the static of our character, there is a oneness that we can all access. Beneath the apparent difference of the cultural inflections that we bear or the hallmarks of our trauma expressed in rhetoric, vernacular, discourse and conflict, there is a oneness trying to be born through you. Maybe you're listening to some bellicose uncle or some Aunt Karen clacking in disagreement, discordant caterwauling across the Christmas table. Well, if you are able, find a way to love them. Imagine this. Imagine an absolute place of love within yourself and outside of yourself and think, this person has been put in front of me for a reason. Can I love them? Can I walk the higher path here? Can I reach out to them in love? And instead of, it, instead of seeing it as my job to annihilate them, to bring them down, to win this conflict, can I be loving to them? What is the message of this time, whether you're Christian or not? This is a time of rebirth. The sun is born. The star is at a high point. Things are as dead as they're ever going to be after the solstice. The rebirth is happening now and the kings and the low folk from the animals and the divine father and the sacred feminine are coming together to rebirth, to bring about a new time a time of new hope. If we get caught in the wheels of our old trauma, just arguing about some transient thing, you know there was a time where Hiroshima was what defined Japan, or the Holocaust was what defined Europe and the people affected by it, whether people from the Jewish community, gay community, which are of the numerous communities that were heavily affected by that hideous event. And now we have moved on. Now we have new challenges and new trauma. Can we with both historical trauma and contemporary trauma, find a way to be beautiful with one another. Not out on the battlefield, but across the Christmas table or whatever festivity brings you together, whether it's Hanukkah or whatever you're doing wherever you are. Can we practice what we preach? 
Can we show how serious we are about our beliefs by treating people with love and respect? Are you capable of doing that today? For one day, can you watch your own emotions and your own feelings and your own thoughts? Can you observe them without combining, without acting on them? Can you suggest to your family or your friends or the group that you're gathered with that you sit for a moment in treasured and cherished silence and allow the silence to connect you? To feel that awkwardness that sometimes comes if you sit quiet and thankful for the opportunity to be with one another, for the opportunity to find resolution, for the opportunity to find peace. Because if we can't find peace in our own homes, if we can't treat the people around us with dignity and respect and a higher regard, then what hope is there out there in the cracked concrete world designed in order to create atomization and conflict? I am asking you, this festive period, to be the best that you can be to the people that are around you. Our high ideals, whether they are socialists or free market capitalists, anarchist or libertarian, social justice warrior or Republican curmudgeon, is it possible that we can reach to the principles that underwrite our belief, which surely have something of strength in them, something of compassion in them, something of love in them, that come from an ulterior place beyond the cultural clutter that is beginning to define our times. Can we get beyond it? Are you able to become the best version of yourself? Can Christ be born in you? Can you become love? Is it possible for you to do that? If it is, then possibly we have hope as a culture. This Christmas. Happy Christmas to you and uh, happy festive season. This is ruining my hair, isn't it? If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Share it around with other family members. Ho, 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 ho. Please turn on the notification bell so I can stay in contact with you constantly. Remember to love one another this year. Remember, as Rocky IV said, if you can change and I can change, maybe the whole damn world can change. Stay free.